He's tough. You got it. You got it. Are you scared? You scared or you got it? Huh? That's a long drop. You got it. Look at that boy. You're learning, huh? Keep going, keep going. Keep going. We got you, we got you. Look at this task. He started over there. Now he's going over here. The goal is to get to the end, or well, the beginning of the slide right there. Then he can go down. You okay? You got it? <laughs> you made it. Good job. Don't fall back. <laughs> okay, now go. There you go. You made it. Give me five. Give me five, buddy. Okay. <laughs> the goal is to push him. Break that fear. Keep him going. Even though the fear kicked in, she kept him going. Regardless of whether or not he wanted to stop. Yeah, rough training, tough. That's how they learn, though. Without the test, without the trial, they ain't gonna learn. You, as a parent, you gotta teach your kid the ways of the Lord. Prepare them for the world. Prepare them for life. The Bible says, train a child in the way he should go, and he will not depart from it. Train your kids, man. Toughen them up. What do you think these kids learn all this from? The adults. Parents can't give you, a parent can't give you what they don't have. If a parent don't got it, they don't have the good parenting skills, they're not gonna give it. You think the music don't have any effect on the kids? know where that kid got that from? That's from an artist, a rapper named 6 9 The evil influence of this world has been here. You think this Bible is a joke? You think God is playing? I know all too well the powerful influence of being influenced by the wrong people, by the wrong crowd, and not being taught right. Proverbs 22, six. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. What does that mean? Train your baby up. School that child. School your baby. It is your job 
to impart wisdom, to give instruction, and to give counsel to your baby girl or your baby boy well before they reach the age of accountability. It is your job to bring them up. It is your job to discipline them. It is your job to keep them on a straight and narrow path. God has given you your baby, your child. It is up to you to school your baby. I always tell people on the streets, if you don't school your baby, you don't teach your kid, the streets will train your baby up. Teach them about drugs. Teach them about alcohol. Teach them about atheism. Teach them about God. You school your children before the school system teaches them which way in the way they should go. Which way is that? God's way. God's will. That's the way you school your babies. And when he is old, when she is old, when they get older, they will not depart from it. Yeah, they may slip and go off course a little bit, but that's how they learn. That's okay. Sometimes that's what it takes for some of them to learn. They got to go through the hard times. They got to go through the trials. Just like I was pushing my little grandson. He wanted to give up. I told him, no, you keep going. Fight through that fear. Teach your babies about fear. Teach them about anxiety. Teach them about depression. Teach them how not to fall into that. Teach them about Hollywood. Teach them about music. Teach them about the influences that they're going to face. Because if you don't, teach them you know the world's going to school them and if the world schools them they're going to be totally off track with the word of God with the will of God you want to be the one to school your child not the system train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. School your babies. Stay on them. Because your children are precious gifts from God. It is your job to teach them and to school them. In Jesus name. Now if we go down to Proverbs 22. 10. This is what's going to happen. If you don't school your kids. Your kid is going to grow up rebellious. Your kid is going to grow up to be a problem. A problem child. A scorner. A person of contention. Strife. Reproach. Cast out the scorner. And contention shall go out. Yea. Strife and reproach shall cease. You want to school your babies so much. They don't become like this. Scorner is just a person of no respect, total disrespect for your household, for the law, for society, for themselves or others, total disrespect to God, rebellious, wild, out of control, was contention, disagreement, dispute, argumentative, variance, the strife. Angry, bitter, conflicting, disagree, causing friction all the time. Reproach, disapproval. Somebody who's always a disappointment. Train your child up in the way he should go. And your child won't end up like that. School your babies. I don't care what age they are. School them now. Proverbs 21, 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. What does that mean? If you don't, if you don't seek God, 
if you don't try to understand the word of God, if you don't seek the Lord with all your might, if you don't fight to figure this out and to figure the world out and what's going on, your perception, your ideology, the way you perceive life is going to be vain, empty. It's going to be dead. That means you're not going to have any soundness as to what this Bible means. You're not even going to be able to interpret it because you don't seek God. Because you don't have the spirit of God to help give you revelation about the book, about his word. This book is the word of God. It's the living word of God. It's not just a regular book. This is the living word of God. This is the Holy Bible. This is how you receive a word from God. This is one way. The best way to receive a word from God is to read it and to ask God for discernment from it. And to ask God to give you wisdom and understanding to interpret it and to apply it to your life. If you don't teach your kids that, and if you don't have that, that's what the verse is saying. You're going to be in the congregation of the dead. You're going to be walking around dead without godly soundness, without godly wisdom and godly understanding. You're going to be walking around in worldly wisdom, just like all these musicians and artists, all these people who rebel against God, who are anti-God, who are anti-Christ. Even some of you Muslim cats, even some of you Hebrew Israelites, you as a parent, if you don't seek the Lord, you don't ask the Lord for counsel and ask him to guide you, you're not going to be able to give it to your children. A parent can't give you what they don't have. A parent can't give their child what they don't have. So if a parent lacks discipline, lacks wisdom, lacks soundness and understanding of God's will, do you think that parent is going to be able to pass that down to their children? and teach their children in the ways that they should go? If they don't have it, they can't give it. It's your job as a parent to impart wisdom in your children. Some of you may not have kids, but you have nephews, you have nieces, you have relatives who are younger who need your help. They can't do this on their own. They need guidance. you just seen those children, man. You just saw a small representation of what's going on out there today. I grew up cursing like that. I grew up smoking weed. I grew up drinking. I started all that at a young age because that's all I saw. That's all I learned about. I grew up in a violent atmosphere. That's what I took in. That's what I perceived. That's what I became until I became born again. That's the reason why you need to be born again. I know you can't see it, but I'm going to read it to you. Ephesians 4, 23. On down. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, your soul, and that ye put on the new man, the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth, with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Be ye angry and sin not. Be mad at evil. Be mad at the way things used to be. Be mad at the way things are when you see people engaged in bondage of evil and wickedness. Not, don't be mad at the person. Be mad at what's behind it. Be mad at the evil. And you fight it. That's what we do. As followers of Christ, we fight evil. We teach people. We reproach. We rebuke. We exhort. That's your job. Be mad at all that evil out there going on. And you fight and continue to contend earnestly and strong in the faith. So you must be born again. Change your ways. Get rid of that old man, that, that old lifestyle that you're in.
John chapter 3, 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Let's go down here. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You need God's Holy Spirit. You need his Holy Spirit because you can't do this without God. You cannot do this without the Holy Spirit. If you try to, that means you're trying to do it in the flesh. You're trying to outthink God. You're trying to do it your way. The Bible says, my ways are above your ways. In other words, don't try to outthink God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So what's all this born again and renewing of the mind stuff that the Bible talks about? That means the old you versus the new you. This is you in the past, right? If you've been born again. This is all the shadiness, the griminess. This is the lying, the stealing. This is the adultery. This is the fornication. Yes, you youngsters, if you're out there having sex before marriage, if you're not married to that girl you're dating, if you're not married to that man you're dating and you're having sex with, that's fornication. Is God against that? Yes, God is against fornication. The Bible says flee sexual immorality. Flee fornication. The old you. Drug use, crime, shadiness, your old grimy self has been changed. You've been transformed into a new person, which is born of Christ now. After you come to Christ, you're born again. You have a renewing of your mind. No, not brainwashed. Changing all this stuff over here that you started with as a youth. Notice, I said as a youth, because these things we pick up, we pick up as a child. Train a child in the way he shall go, and when he is older, he will not depart from it. We get trained wrong from birth to whenever we come to Christ, if you come to Christ. You get trained and defiled, and you get full of all the things of the world that pull you away from God, that keep you away from God, or that deceive you about who God is and deceive you about if you need God or not or if you need to be born again or if you need to repent or even a lot of you guys tell me that Jesus is not the Christ. That's an antichrist statement. If you claim that, if you, if you say Muslims say Jesus was just a great prophet, New Age is just say he was a, a great teacher. So everything we learn as a youth in the world, contaminated. All the way up until you meet God. God shows you. That's why you need his Holy Spirit to give you guidance. To give you revelation. You need his spirit to give you counsel. Without the Holy Spirit... You can't even interpret this right. You need his Holy Spirit to read this. Some of you ask me, how do I read the Bible? Repent sincerely, first of all. Then you go to the book. Then you go to God's word. You ask God for a word. Lord, today, give me a word, please. Give me guidance today, Lord. Show me what you want me to know. Show me what you want me to learn so I can give it to others. See, not just your children. You, you pass it down to other people. The word of God. God wants to instruct you on how to deal with this life and how to teach your children. Because if you don't know how to teach your children, guess what's going to happen to your children? Yeah, then they're going to grow up all messed up. Next thing you know, you got to kick them out. Or they end up going to jail. Or they end up in some kind of grimy lifestyle. Or they end up addicted, stealing everything they can just to stay high. Or they end up dead. You 
can dictate how your children grow up. But you got to have enough courage. You got to have enough willpower to pull them out if they're already in the trenches of darkness. You got to go and pull them out. Just like the shepherd. He'll leave the 99 sheep just to go get the one that got lost, that fell in the ravine, the ditch, the whatever, the pit. That's how much God loves you. That's how much God cares about you. If you don't teach your children confidence, they're going to grow up weak and sensitive and, and too soft, timid and afraid and full of fear and anxiety. Then they won't be able to go out there and manage properly in the world. Motivate your kids in Jesus' name. Encourage your children through the word of God. Lift them up. Pick them up no matter what. No, don't always fight their battles because a lot of times your children got to go through the battle. They got to go through the fight. They got to go through the fire sometimes. That's okay because that's what makes them. No, I ain't talking about they got to go through drugs and this and that, but sometimes they do. But that's not on you because one day your child is going to reach an age of accountability. And then it's all on them. It's just like my children. They're of age now. They're older now. I told them from the get-go, when my children reach the age of accountability, I told them, okay, now I gave you the word of God. I taught you the word of God. We went to church. We ministered together. We had Bible studies together. We prayed together. Now, it's up to you whether or not you want to maintain your relationship with God. It's on you. Yes, the Bible says, teach them in the way they should go. And when they're older, they will not depart from it. Some will depart, though. That's Let's be realistic. Some will depart from the word of God. But what that means is that the ones who get it, the ones who have the ear to understand, the ear to hear, and the eyes to see, they'll go back to God. They will crawl back to God when it's time. Just like some of you, some of you, I see some of you, you guys are crawling back on your knees back to God. How do I know? Because you're telling me. I did the same thing. I didn't grow up in the church, but I met God in the early 90s. I got baptized in 1994, 95. Rolled with God for a good year or two. Fell off immediately. But I learned. I learned about the Lord. I learned who Jesus was, why he came and died on the cross for our sins, what I must do to maintain a relationship with him. But did I? No. I quickly fell off and drifted for years. Until 2013, I came back crawling on my knees, just like some of you. Mm -hmm. Some of you are crawling back on your knees to God. There ain't nothing wrong with that. You want to do that. Some of you are feeling convicted lately. Because you know why? Because God is probing your heart. God is probing your heart because he knows who you are. God knows you. God wants you back. God knows who is his. God knows his children. God knows who belongs to him. You belong to the Lord Almighty. And he's waiting for you. That's why you're getting convicted. And that's why you feel the shame. But that's good. You want that to happen. We need shame. We need to feel that condemnation sometimes. No, he's not condemning you. You're condemning yourself. Plus, Satan's condemning you too at the same time. But you want that. God is probing your heart because he knows who you are. God knows you. God wants you back. God knows who is his. God knows his children. God knows who belongs to him. You belong to the Lord Almighty. And he's waiting for you. That's why you're getting convicted. And that's why you feel the shame. But that's good. You want that to happen. We need shame. 
We need to feel that condemnation sometimes. No, he's not condemning. You're condemning yourself. Plus, Satan's condemning you too at the same time. But you want that. You want that sorrowfulness because you've been living wrong. You've been living in sin. So 2 Corinthians 7, 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. You want godly sorrow. That way it leads you to repentance. Go ahead, crawl back on your knees to God. This is saying that you want to feel sorry for your sins that will lead you to repentance because you're thinking about how wrong you've been. You're thinking about how much and how outside of the will of God you have been. You're thinking about how much wickedness you've been engaged in. And now you're feeling down and shame about the way you've been living and not living for God. That will lead you to salvation because you'll repent. Repent because of godly sorrow, not sorrow for the world, not feeling bad oh, just for the world, not feeling bad just because you feel bad. Godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not the sorrow of the world. That's nothing. That does nothing to atone for your sins. Only Jesus Christ, only repentance through Jesus Christ. Only he can be the atonement for your sins. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Teach your kids faith in God. Teach them to have 100% faith, 1,000% faith. God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Teach them confidence. Teach them self-esteem. Lift them up. Teach them how to have vision. Teach them how to have goals. Teach them how to fight through obstacles. Teach them how to be constructive. Teach them how to build in life. Teach them how to add value to others. That way they don't grow up and become takers. Teach them creativity. Make them do projects. Like some of you farmers, you put your kids to work on the farm to tend to the livestock, to the crops, whatever. Man, I'm all for that, man. Never let your kids sit idle. Never let them sit down and waste hours upon hours on video games and watching movies all day or sitting there on an iPad all day or whatever electronic device you give them to babysit them with. Don't do that. Do not do that. Teach them, man. That's how we grew up in the 80s. There was none of this electronic stuff, man. So we learned how to think constructively. Do not let your kids become lazy. The slothful man saith, there is a lion without. I shall be slain in the streets. What that saying is a lazy person We'll make excuses. Don't let your kids make excuses. This Bible was against being lazy. It's against being slothful. Do not let your children grow up like that. I didn't have a lot of guidance growing up. All that stuff I just told you, I didn't have none of that. No, I got that later on in life. But I went through trial after trial, test after test. I've been through some crooked and wicked and extremely distressful periods and seasons in my life. I wouldn't take none of it back, except for the violence that I've done on other people. But as far as the trials and tests and the mountains I had to climb, I wouldn't take that back because that's what makes you. And your job is to teach your kid how to plow through the mountains, how to dig through the trenches, how to fight back, regardless of how they get hit or whatever angle they get hit from, whether it be from the devil or from life, period. That's your job. 
God gave you those children for a reason. He gave you the responsibility to school them. So school your kids before the streets school them. And if the streets school them, that means the devil is schooling them. Straight up. Now the question is, is the devil schooling your kid today? Is your kid rebellious? Then your job is to pray for your child. You got to go to war for your baby now. Pull your baby out of that stronghold right now. Go to war. This is how you do it. You submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee. But how do you do that? You got to go in a heavy, heavy prayer. You got to pray when you don't feel like it. When your flesh says, no, nah, not right now. I don't feel like picking this book up. I'm too tired. That's when you read it. You pray even harder. When your flesh says, oh, okay, I prayed for two minutes. You pray for 10 minutes. You pray for 15 minutes. You pray for 30 minutes. You pray for a whole hour. Better yet, you pray all day. The Bible says, Pray without ceasing. Constantly praying. Wherever you go. Of course you don't shut your eyes when you're walking around and start praying. But you're praying for everybody. You're praying wherever you're going. You pray as you're driving. You pray as you get hit with the storm. You pray if you lose your job. You pray if you get a job. You pray before you go to the interview. Pray for the homeless man that you see in front of the store. You pray for the clerks at the store. You pray for safety. You pray for guidance. You pray for protection all day, praying without ceasing. That's what I try to do all day. You know why? I'm not no super Christian. I don't got a cape on or nothing because I don't want to fall back to where I came from. Remember? The old man, born again. I'm born again. I don't want to go back to this. There's a constant pull. It keeps trying to pull me back. You know what I mean? It tries to grab me back. It tries to take me back to where I used to be. Drinking, smoking, lying, cheating, whatever. You name it. It doesn't stop. Yes, I know the Lord. But that doesn't mean you're never going to be tempted or tested. For the rest of your life, you will always be tested. And so will your children. That's why the Bible says train them now. Train them at the get-go. Train them at the beginning. That way, when they grow up, they won't depart from it. They'll have the ammo. You teach them about the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, to have their loins girt about with truth, the shoes of the gospel. And you teach them about the sword of the spirit. That way, when they get hit over here, they can come back running. They could come running back to God. Oh, Lord, help me. Help me, God. I'm having a hard time pulling out of this one. That way they run straight to the Lord and go back to the source of their strength, which they learn way over here. Teach a child in the way they should go. And when they get older, they will not depart from it. But when I was growing up, I didn't have guidance. No, I was looking for guidance. Guess where I found it? I found it in the streets. There were many other peers they taught me a lot of things but unfortunately the majority of it was crooked so that's how I grew up I didn't have guidance so as a youth I was already troubled man I had my mom going in and out of the juvenile court system always going to court always on probation with the juvenile hall early as I got older I realized that Man, I don't know nothing. I didn't know how to interview. I didn't know how to fill out applications. I was 19 years old at that time. I didn't know how to talk to people. I was scared to go outside of my circle of influence. I was scared to go outside of the neighborhood. I didn't know what was out there. It was scary because I was accustomed to that environment only. I was conditioned to stay right there, just like some of you are. Mm -hmm. Some of you have grown up like that. 
And some of you are in that situation right now where you have become a product of where you are at. You have become a product of your environment that has shaped your mindset. It has shaped your perception. And now you're stuck with all these phobias and all these fears that prevent you from going outside of your circle of influence. You ever heard that phrase, you are the subtotal of the five people you hang out with? Well, let me add to it. You are the subtotal of the amount of advisors that you surround yourself with. Not just five people. Whoever you get your counsel from, whoever gives you advice, whoever teaches you, that's what you become. So I started learning, man, I got to get out of this circle, man. We ain't doing nothing. We ain't doing nothing at all. All we do is smoke weed, drink malt liquor, sip on Hennessy, St. Ives, 211, whatever you want to call it. All that junk. Mad Dog 2020, Seagram's, Cisco. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. So, so what I had to do is I had to branch off. I branched off and I was like, I need some help. So I joined these programs. One was called Hire a Youth. It was a counseling group that was funded by the state that helped youngsters, troubled youth on the streets. Then I joined another one at the same time called Simone Affairs. Yes, for those of you who don't know, I'm Simone and Black. So I joined those two organizations. Hoo-wee! Boy, did I take off from there. They taught me all kinds of stuff. We were doing mock interviews. They were showing us how to fill out applications. They were showing us different scenarios for how to deal with life, and this and that, and how to, you know, put us on the computers and stuff. Gave us change and tokens for the trolleys, for the buses, all that, man. One of those gentlemen in the organization, one day, shook my hand, and my handshake was limp, like that. And he was like, oh, nah, brother, nah. Uh-uh, that's not how you shake a man's hand. And he told me, when you shake a man's hand, you grab that hand like that. And you let him know, I got confidence in myself. You look him dead in the eyes, and you tell him, I got confidence, I know who I am. It's things like that that help the youth. It's things like that that teach youngsters. It's things like that that even help adults. So from that point on, I always gave everybody a firm handshake, even squeezed it, even strangers. I teach youngsters that now, that same handshake. Make it a firm handshake, let them know. I mean business. I'm serious about who I am. I ain't no joke. I got confidence. And my source of strength comes from the Lord, Jesus Christ. Proverbs 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion, school the youngsters. Put them up on knowledge, true knowledge, true wisdom. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Remember what I said about advisors? Seek advisors, people who can help you, people who have understanding, people who have been through the trenches, who have taken the arrows. Seek sound and wise advice from people who counsel, but who have godly counsel, not worldly counsel, not wicked worldly counsel. That's what I mean. You can have, there's good worldly counsel, but there's also wicked. So be wise about the counsel that you receive. To understand the proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. This is why you need to fear the Lord. You need to have a strong reverence and respect for the Lord.
because this is where your knowledge comes from. God gives you the ability to discern and he gives you the true knowledge of what you need to know in this lifetime for you to be saved, for you to make it through and to have true peace, a peace that is beyond all understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Proverbs 1.10, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Let's move over to Proverbs 1, 33. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. No fear. All right? Teach your kids that too. No fear. I'm not going to end this without showing you repentance and how you need to be saved. Because you can have all that knowledge on how to school your children or yourself or how to deal with life. But if you don't know that you need Jesus Christ to atone for your sins, then all that's in vain. It's done for no reason because that doesn't save you. So you must repent in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Dead from what? Dead from the bondage, the, the grips of Satan that he had you in. You're free from that now. Because you have come to Christ in repentance, in baptism, in faith, and you truly trust him. And you've given him, and now you walk in obedience. Born again, remember? Old man, born again. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. There is no more dominion over you. Because you have Christ now. Let's finish up with this. Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them. Repent. And be baptized. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you. And to your children. And to your children. And to all that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. For the promise is unto you and to your children. In Jesus' name. Hey. Whoa. I can't hold on no more.